keep smiling, keep shining, knowing you can always count on me. That's What Friends Are For was a huge hit for Dion Warwick and Friends, as well as for lyricist Carol Bayer Sager. Fans never seem to tire of playing her songs, as we hear now from Rita Braver. Beautiful, thank you. Oh, I love that. That's great. Her face may not be familiar. We don't cry But her songs certainly are. When I need you. Carol Bear Sager has been writing memorable lyrics for more than half a century. Turn on your heart light. What makes a good lyric for you? A good lyric for me is one that touches me, and therefore I feel it'll touch you. At age 69, she tools around her lush Los Angeles estate in a custom-designed cart. And she's got a home studio full of gold and platinum records. There's more records, but I ran out of space. <laughs> but she says growing up in Manhattan, she was a chubby, insecure kid with a domineering mother. She told me she had to sew two Girl Scout uniforms together for me to get into one at about that awkward age of 12. And she had a picture of me on the refrigerator like that and said, you sure you want this fatty? Yeah. <laughs> Music was her refuge. She wrote songs all through high school and college, but took a job as a teacher until 1966, when a song she and a friend had written became a hit. I got a check in the mail and it was for $34,000, and I went, oh, I'm teaching school, and I'm making $5,200 a year. And what I was struck with at first was the inequity. I wrote that song so quickly, and teaching school is hard. She started writing full time, but it would be almost a decade till she hit the charts again. Whatever it is, it'll keep till the morning. Teaming up with a then little known singer songwriter named Melissa Manchester. What was it like to have a hit again after It was nine great. Years? It was so great. It just felt like, wow, I'm so glad I kept doing what I love. And I think we can make it. But Carol's personal life was another story, as her marriage to businessman Andrew Sager, whose name she still uses, unraveled. She threw herself into writing, and then in 1975, a mutual friend suggested she try working with a young, award-winning composer, Marvin Hamlish. He told her he'd been commissioned to write a song for a James Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me. I said, you know, if I were writing a Bond song, I have a really good title. Nobody does it better. What about Nobody Does It Better for a Bond movie? And he said, I love that. The spy. Sung by Carly Simon, the song got an Oscar nomination. Looking through the eyes. So did their theme for the movie Ice Castles. Sager and Hamlish became a couple. And then you went on to write a Broadway hit musical with Marvin Hamlish and Neil Simon. Unbelievable. Oh my God. Don't you hear that? Don't you recognize that? Don't you know what they're playing? That's, I, I wrote that. Oh, they're playing my song. Yeah, they're playing my song. And Based on the quirky song, romance between Sager and Hamlish, the show was called They're Playing Our Song. It's weaving its spell around this room. Nobody's and Sager borrowed the title for her new memoir, published by Simon & Schuster, a division of CBS. It details her breakup with Hamlish. We were friends at the beginning, and it was easy to be friends at the end because neither one of us were holding... Heartbroken. Heartbroken, that's perfect. We stayed friends until the end of his life. Once in your life... But the next chapter of her life was more complicated. Her relationship with famed songwriter Burt Bacharach, nearly 20 years her senior. I think I fell in love immediately with the way he speaks. If he were to meet you, he'd say, hey, uh, Rita, uh, good to meet you. Half whisper, half 
like the rhythms in which he pull you in, pulls you in, holds you there, dangling. When you get caught between the moon and New York City. They were married in 1982, and there were plenty of good times. Their son Christopher, glamorous pals like Michael Jackson and Elizabeth Taylor. The Oscar they won for Arthur's theme. The best that you can do. And the Grammy for That's What Friends Are For. Fall in love. But Sager says the bad times soon outweighed the good. You say the years with Bert were sort of like being in an abusive relationship without any physical signs of abuse. Well, yes, because he couldn't give me what I needed. I didn't have the self-esteem to say, this isn't working for either of us. In one of the most honest things I have ever read in a memoir, you write that at one point he actually told you that sometimes when you touched him, it made him feel, quote, sick, almost nauseated. That must not have been easy to write. It was horrible, and, and it was horrible to hear. I was crying. I don't think he thought he was hurt. I don't know what he thought. You think he's a narcissist. That's what you say over Well, he over sort again. of told me. He once said to me, hey, baby, what do, you, what do you want from me? I'm a selfish guy. Maybe he would find me. Bacharach ultimately left Sager for another woman. And maybe he'd remind me. And they divorced in 1991. Of who I am. Sager did not give up on love. In 1996, she married Bob Daly, a former CBS executive who went on to run Warner Brothers and the Los Angeles Dodgers. I think I know better than anybody in my whole life. I know everything about Carol. And? And I love her. You Warts know. and all. You always said that you feared that you were unlovable. Do you think he's changed that for you? Absolutely. I do feel loved. And a new passion for painting has helped her cope with some old issues. I started to paint the foods I couldn't eat, that were forbidden foods as a kid and all the foods I'd like to eat. But she hasn't given up the art of music. Stronger Together, a song Carol Bear Sager co-wrote, closed out the Democratic National Convention in July. I do feel so extraordinarily grateful that I got to do what I love to do in this life. And I was rewarded for it. I would have done it for nothing. On me, for sure. An ending for sure. worthy of a love song. That's what friends are for.